Hi, welcome to the Arizona desert at night. Can't see much because it's so dark out here, but I want to take you on a tour of some of the nightlife that exists out here in the Arizona desert. We're going to investigate some of my favorites, the lesser nighthawk, the great horned owl, coyotes, scorpions, and a couple others. Anyway, join me for the next few minutes as we look at these animals, these amazing animals. As we go through this, I want you to take notes, get a piece of paper and pencil, and we will write down some of the observations and characteristics of the nightlife of Arizona. Enjoy the ride. Our first animal that we're going to talk about is a lesser nighthawk. Nighthawks are insector, insectivores uh, birds. They want to eat lots of insects. Um, they have slender wings um, and a distinctive erratic flight pattern. They are most active at dusk and at dawn. Um, they have this characteristic dive that they make when they're doing this, when they're mating, that is very beautiful and one of my favorite things. A close look at their pointed wings, and they have pointed wings and small beaks, uh, perfect for catching insects on the wing. What do you think are the challenges and advantages of being a nocturnal insectivore? You're eating insects at night. What's the advantages and challenges of that? Jot down your thoughts and we'll move on to the next animal in a few moments. Let's talk about the common poor will. These are one of my favorite birds. They are nocturnal and they're unique for its ability to enter a state of toper, reducing its body temperature and me metabolic rate. This adaptation allows it to conserve energy during cold nights. What might be the benefit for the toper for a small living, small bird living in the desert? One of my favorite experiences with a poor will was when I was in college, I went on a trip into the Mojave Desert and we found some poor wills. And if you shine light on poor will, a poor will, it'll typically freeze uh, because it can't see you. And I was able to get pretty close to one and uh, they're just beautiful little, little birds and one I appreciate immensely here in the Arizona deserts. So I am out and I have just heard two great horned owls. And if I'm really quiet, you might be able to hear them also. Here are three, actually. It's amazing that I can hear them. Um, they're rather common in this neck of the woods of Arizona. We're in eastern Arizona. And uh, because they um, exist out here, um, a lot of, and they do a lot of their hunting at night. And so, Small mammals um, need to be on the lookout if they're going to survive um, this. And they have excellent eyesight. Um, 
So, yeah. Important. So cool, though. Let's, I'm going to go see if I can find one um, to show you. I know exactly where one's at. Let's talk some more about the Great Horned Owl, a powerful nocturnal predator with its large eyes adapted for low light vision and its incredible hearing. The Great Horned Owl can detect even the slightest movements of, of its prey. Notice the tufts in its, on its head, which are not ears, but are thought to play a role in camouflage. How do you think the Great Horned Owl's physical characteristics aid its role as a top nocturnal predator? Write down your observations. See, it's preparing itself. And then, come on, click. It's ready. There it is. <laughs> yeah, it went. No, that's the same. Oh, it is. It's just smaller. Maybe that's a male and this one's a female. Wait, males are smaller? Usually. Yeah. Next, we have uh, the coyote, one of the most adaptable animals in North America. Coyotes are omnivores and will eat anything from small animals to birds, fruits, even vegetables. They are known for their intelligence and keen senses, particularly their sense of hearing and smell, which they use to hunt at night. Consider how the coyote's diet and senses helps, help it survive in the desert. What adaptations do you think are the most important for its nocturnal lifestyle? Oh, and then there's the raccoons. Raccoons have, uh, they're known for their curiosity. And they have uh, great paws in the front that allow them to, um, uh, <laughs> um, forage for food. And these, these wonderful creatures are sometimes known as a nuisance, but it is their problem-solving skills that allow them to be so, so successful. Their uh, behavior, their mask-like face, their ringed tail help them in many ways 
um, at night. And so what do you think those characteristics might do for them at night? Let's end our conversation tonight talking about scorpions. Scorpions are very interesting. There's a ton of variety of different scorpions. As you know, the smaller the scorpion, the more potent its toxin is. So um, here in southeastern Arizona, we have a lot of what are known as bark scorpions, and they're rather small scorpions. Um, these bark scorpions are amongst the most dangerous of scorpions out there. I've been stung twice by scorpions. The first time, I don't know what it was, but the second time I was definitely stung by a bark scorpion and my entire leg went numb. Um, and so, yeah, kind of crazy. Um, those are the most dangerous, especially for elderly and small children. Um, and uh, should definitely seek medical attention if you get stung by those. Um, they are, I don't know if you can see me in the dark, but here, but they can get, you know, no bigger than that. And uh, they can hide in small, small spaces. Uh, a house I lived in before I moved to my current home had lots of scorpions. Um, and so, yes, they're very interesting. Um, some of the things that you can do to uh, keep scorpions away from you, um, uh, diatomaceous earth around your house is sometimes helpful, and there are some other instances. You can see scorpions really well using UV lights at night. Um, that'll help you see them, and usually you can um, buy them for, for not too much money.